Welcome back tubers and it's time to capacity test my wall. I have spent the last several days charging up to as close to top of charge as I can. It's a little bit silly to try and continue past this stage because I'm going to drop it back to 4 volts when I'm uh, 4.1 volts after I'm done with this test. I can't put any more reasonable in there. Uh, these inverters have a limit of 58.4 and we're about 58.48 because this has a slightly high limit so I've been charging with these all night I've been charging with this all day to pump it all the way up as far as I can so how this little test is going to work I'm going to run the Bitcoin miner as long as we can uh, now it takes around about 10 amp draw and we're going to see how many days, weeks, hours, whatever we can run the Bitcoin miner for on one solid charge. Now I'm going to turn off the solar and of course we'll know the solar, there we go, it's just dropped. So the inverters are now pulling two amps. Uh, yes, that's two amps, 24 hours a day, seven days a week when they're idle. I don't know what they use when they're running, but it's about 60 watts. We are also going to, we've got the inverters are on still. So the theory is I should be able to turn the switches off. I have never actually tried this and the inverters should stay running. We should still have power to this power point because I've transferred the switch so the house is on grid, not off grid in the power board, but I haven't turned off the power running in here. So this power board will still work. The load that will be on the Bitcoin miner, well, Ethereum miner, I should call it, will be through the Batrium but there will be a small load from that 20, uh, 48 to 12 volt converter for fans. So let's turn these off, off, off. Ah, damn it. Okay, so all the power went out and here. Okay, contingency plan, I'll just run an extension cable out here. There we go, back in business. Uh, interesting, I just had a look up in the workshop on the capture and it turns out that these inverters are still drawing the same two amps even though they're turned off. I know their primary source is battery and I also have got to have that on because it comes to that junction box and then comes down into the Bitcoin miner. Radio, the duck's booted back up. Let's have a look at Watch One Toolkit. So it is still balancing obviously, but once we throw a load on it, that'll disappear. We go over to this side, hit the big breaker, give it some juice. She turns on. Booting up into EthOS. It usually takes several minutes to actually kick in, just because of the wireless on the EthOS. This whole test will tell me my capacity, my current capacity of my batteries if they are fully charged or fully flat. And also, I hope to see at the end of it, my cells, at a glance, I'll be able to tell which ones need upgrading. I'm expecting to see probably 500 amp hours we might go closer to six i'm not sure i call it a 600 amp hour pack but who really knows and there we go i just missed it we just started hashing rightio we've got just on nine amps at 58.3 volts what we'll do is we'll take the amp hours over here and then we will get the volts when we start, the volts when we finished, halve it, and work out the volts, like an average volt, and then we'll times it by the amps, the amp hours, and that'll get us kilowatt hours, and we can compare it to this as well. So let's, let's do, let this, let's let this do its thing. We'll have a look down here. That's saying 9 point, say 9.4, and that is saying about 9.3, so 9.4, so I am happy with that. Radio Battery Hasher, do your thing.
Okay, we're about 64 hours into this load test and I'm happy to say we're almost done. Uh, we're coming up on 600 amp hours draw from the batteries at about 530 watts. Um, I'm really happy with the results. I got the results I expected. I've always said my battery's about 600 amp hours. Rightio, by this point, I really should have stopped babbling onto the camera and actually got some results for you. So I'll edit some results in now and you can watch the final bit of the batteries dying after I'm done if you'd like. So we have uh, worked out on the Batrium up in the top left hand corner of the right hand corner of the screen. Um, the amp hours at midnight every night. I tried to slow the video down so you could actually see that as well um, at those periods of time. So we had 3.608 amp hours on the first min at the first midnight I guess. The second midnight we had 11 amp hours. The next one we had 12.87. And of course that number is going to rise because the voltage drops and the amps rise up. And then the third day we have 4.5 amp hours giving us a total of 31.58 kilowatt hours from my battery. Now we can also work out, and I'm reading from a piece of paper, uh, the high voltage was 58.4 volts, the low voltage was 46.7 volts. So we had a difference of 11.7 volts. Um, we'll divide that by 2, gave us 5.85 volts. Add that to the low figure uh, of 46.7, gave us 52.55 volts as an average voltage over the whole test. Um, we times that by maths and a figure of 600 amp hours and then we get 31.53 or that's kilowatt hours or 31.530 watt hours so the batrium and the maths my rudimentary piece of paper maths works out good let's cut back to that's 63 hours the caveat to that is seven hours it wasn't actually hashing um, I've left that into the screen capture as well on the Batrium stuff um, I think it was within the first 24 hours the miner stopped working because the slot was loose or something I'll make up an excuse for that later anyway back to me ranting um, of course that's from fully charged to fully discharged now when I fully charged the batteries I managed the hell out of them I didn't trust my Batrium just to magically do its thing because it just couldn't with the way I charged those batteries back up to get them up as high as I could. Um, I really did use everything in my power to get those batteries to charge. I used every single cell charger I had um, to boost the lower packs. I turned the chargers on and off and on and off even though the Batrium does, you know, does the balancing itself. It only does 1.7 amps max or something like that. So I really had to take care to do that. So if you're ever going to do this test, don't blindly trust the equipment you have. And that's not a bad thing about Batrium. It's just a reality about the industry that we're in. So let's move forward and let's have a look. We're going to go back to this computer here. We'll change the scaling on this computer. Now the scaling allows us um, on the left hand side, we've got 2.5 uh, what is it? Volts sitting there, and our lowest cell is currently 2.7, uh, 2.57 volts. So if we change the scaling a little bit, we go to well, we'll just go to one. We'll go to zero volt on the scaling. Enter, save. So it 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 mushes it up a little bit, but it really does give us an idea of how much is left in the batteries if we were going to completely drain the batteries to nothing, which I'm actually going to do. Uh, the cells that are low, I'm going to use them as an excuse to replace them out with that one there. With that one there. Will I test it again in the short term? Probably not. Even after I replace those cells, I'm probably only going to get another maybe 50 amp hours out of the batteries before other cells start showing their, their hand and being bad because, you know, I'm using second-hand cells that I didn't put too much effort into building consistent packs. Anyway, tubers, this one's been a long one to make. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button. If you didn't, do the other one. It's all good. It lets me know. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.
Radio right, yeah, guys, if you hung around after I signed off, basically this part is just the, the dying of the batteries, I guess you'd say. And as it, as it turns out, the dying of my cell monitors. Uh, what I didn't realise is was once the, the battery voltage, or the cell voltage, drops below, uh, what is it, 2.1 volts, I think I worked it out at, it actually turns off all the, well, turns off one long one, which is the lower cell and then as a result stops the communication so the long mon stop working but as you can see across the top the bar is still ticking over by the time we get to the end we get 59.6 kilowatt hours plus the two or three kilowatt hours that it was in negative when i started so we got to 600 kilowatt hours anyway thanks guys for tuning in yet again and hanging around and i will see you on the next one